Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. The first thing I'm going to do to continue on this model is try to fit up these fenders with the pickup bed. And when I glue this all together, the fender will cover that line. Here's the grill in the grill surround. This tailgate is sunken in here and down there. Here's our taillights after a bit of that red paint and you can see that they already look better. And now on to the show. Here's our completed grill and you can see the cool looking 57 Chevy Dagmars on the front. Now I will be putting a license plate in here and we'll take a look at that after. But what I wanted to point out is that I had done a black wash in between the grill bars, added in the gold right in there and there of course, and then the four headlights. Now the secret to getting the headlights glued in is I take my number 11 hobby blade, that is the, uh, the real knife edge looking one, you know, and I kind of stand it on edge and I scrape the top half of the lights like the chrome bezels, the top half of the chrome bezels. And then I cut out the headlights and I drop them into the holes. I also, uh, where the parts tree is, I just take my file and file that round like the rest of the headlight. And then I rotate them to get them in this position, north, south, east, and west. Just rotate them around with your hobby blade, carefully, of course, and then I move them up to touch the top and then I get the liquid glue and I open it under the table so that it doesn't splash on any of these as you're pulling the brush with the, the lid and the brush out. And then what I do is I just take the little paint brush, one of my other paint brushes, and I dip it into the liquid cement and then I just run a tiny bead of the liquid glue right on the tops of the headlights. So normally what happens is when people are looking at this model it's down like this so they're not looking at the top bit of the headlight bezels so if you get the bare plastic to plastic up on the top no one is ever going to see that and then you end up with good looking headlights in the grill like that and be very careful use your smallest brush to apply the glue at the top because it can go under and fog the headlight from behind, so you don't really want that to happen. But overall, this looks pretty good. Now, turning the grill over, I noticed that these V's that we talked about before to line up the uh, bars here and scrape the chrome off, you can actually use those V's on the front of the cab. They correspond with that part that I scraped off on the radiator support wall right there and there. So what I'll do is just add a little bit of glue to those V-bars. Usually I scrape the edges here, but I've just found out that I don't really need to do that. The front grill will just, should just drop into place, just like that. And you notice that uh, I painted that entire radiator in the front all the way down, but you really only just see that little top bit. But still, you know, if it's painted all the way down to the bottom, especially here, right in there, it looks correct. So, <laughs> just trying to drop this down a bit. I don't know, it won't work. But I'll glue that uh, front grill in there, and then you'll be able to see it better. Now, the other thing I need to do is carefully paint these wires and these little boxes here with uh, black paint, just to make them stand out underneath, and then add the horn in right where that hole is and clear the paint out of the hole before I go and make sure there's no paint on the stick end of the horn. Here's a side profile of our truck box and you can see those cool little Corvette tail lamps in here. Now I did glue them in and then I added an extra little bit of red paint on the outside after they were glued in because I do think I kind of fingerprinted them as I was trying to apply them in the hole. But you can see with that gold there and if I just tilt the tail light you get a bit of a reflection and it fills just this little bit with red, which really is cool. Then the tailgate will lift up and click into place. Again, nice work by AMT. The only thing I need to do now is just paint underneath here with a color. And uh, I'm going to do a little something special in the interior of the truck bed. I was thinking of painting this wood, but then I think the wood against the pink would not look very good. <laughs> 
So I'm going to try something different there and hopefully it all works out. Here I have some underhood details and you can see I took my little paintbrush and some flat black paint and painted in all the wires in underneath the hood on the fender aprons as well as using the Maltol chrome to paint the little boxes. I also have used the chrome right here and this is the catch for the hood latch and I did add in some black right there and there. I'm not sure if those are uh, holes or little rubber bits for the hood to sit on. But overall it went pretty well. You can see all the different wiring, like on the firewall back there. And then uh, there it is onto the uh, fender aprons. Turned out pretty decently. The only thing I need to add in here still is the horn. But I had to uh, clean it up before I actually got it in here. So it's still waiting on the cleanup. And I did look up dashboards online. And if I just bring the camera in, maybe that was too far. You can see that um, the instrument panel has this chrome N shape in here. And uh, that's what it was missing. And I was able just to kind of see where it was. Underneath, I think there are oil and uh, engine temperature gauges. But they are too <laughs> tiny to see. And then the little dots up top represent the numbers off of the speedometer. And there should be a red needle, which I might paint in a little bit later. But it is kind of underneath that chrome bit, so you wouldn't really see it. But overall, I think just adding that U-shaped chrome in there just sort of added that finishing touch, especially when I can't really see what's going on. One thing that I have made for model cars in my collection here are these license plates from 1958. Now these are primarily Canadian plates, but there are some American ones. And uh, to tell the story, what I have here are plates primarily from British Columbia in this area that are from 1958. Now in British Columbia, it was a centennial of logging from 1858 to 1958, and that was a special license plate they had. It's really supposed to be gold and green. But, of course, our printers can't really print gold the way it should be. So it came up with this kind of mustardy yellow, but still, I mean, it's not bad. Now, we have some plates here from Alaska, Alberta, um, Arizona, and then uh, British Columbia. Some of these I can't, even though I got new glasses, I can't totally see from the distance. I also have Georgia one set, Idaho. Now, my story is that I want to make a diorama. I always want to make a diorama, but I want to make a diorama that is supposed to be of uh, the centennial in 18, or 1958. Yeah, 1858. Now, you'll see here, license plates from, uh, sorry, from 1958, size 2. The width is 1.12 centimeters, and the height is 0 0.60. Now, how I determined this was actually measuring license plates off the model cars. I also have another set that are a little smaller, I think. Yes, just a little bit smaller, and that's for the smaller shroud, uh, shrouds. shrouds. Um, yeah, there's Nebraska. So what I tried to have imagined was British Columbia is having a centennial, and maybe some cars have come up from other states just to check it out, and other provinces, like here's New Brunswick, for example. There's Nevada. You can barely even read that one. It was gray with sky blue lettering. Like, yeah. And they said that even this was hard to read back in the day. But, you know, white and blue are always good. The orange and black, that's Mississippi. And I know there's California is like that, too. There's New Mexico. Uh, at any rate, oh, yeah, there's Wyoming down here, which is cool. It's a guy riding a horse. <laughs> Some of these uh, things are just too neat. Oh, yeah. Cat, dog, hen, <laughs> you know, rat. Just having some fun there with the letters. Okay, and then as I move this down, these are all movie posters. And I also have some magazines. So there's Time Life magazine, The Washington Post, Mad Magazine, Life magazine, a Batman comic, and Teenage Love. We also have... Queen of Outer Space with Zaza Gabor, Hot Rod Girl, Hot Rod Gang, Hot Car Girl. I wonder if they're related. 
<laughs> Attack of the 50 Foot Woman. And you'll also notice that these posters are different sizes here. So I was uh, looking up posters on the internet for sizes. These larger ones would have been uh, in the, uh, like the main posters outside. And then these smaller ones would be as you were in the lobby. It's something to that effect. So I have those. And then I made another sheet here. And what I've got at the top of this one is record albums from 1958. So some of these are like Western or something. And then you've got, um, oh, Jerry Lee Lewis, I believe this one is. And th these ones are uh, double, so I could fold them in half and have either side up. Oh, this one is actually the Centennial Record from 1958. And it had a bunch of stories and music on it. You can uh, find it actually on uh, YouTube. So there's Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, Gigi from the movie, Little Richard, um, Chuck Berry over there, Bo Diddley. I forget what, I think these are like, that's a Beach Boys or something. And I think that's Eartha Kitt or something. And we, I think this is organ, Organs in Orbit or just in orbit. There's Johnny Cash, B.B. King. You know, this one would be kind of nice in the truck because it's pink and then yellow. And then I've got like some tiki kind of ones. Yambu. Um, well, there's Ricky Nelson. Mainstream 1958. It's James Dean down there. <laughs> I've got Dracula. Uh, Philly Joe Jones. <laughs> that one's a really weird. Actually, it's funny because there's only one song that's about Dracula on there and the rest is just jazz. Um, oh, it's called Blues for Dracula. That's the name of the title. Okay, so then down here I've got roadmaps. And these are also... Um, actually, these are not roadmaps. These are postcards from the uh, Centennial. And these are all scaled in. So, I mean, compared to the dashboard, if I can bring this over here, that's the size of the... <laughs> The thing right there. It's really tiny, as you can see. And then we've got more uh, main posters. Hot Rod Gang, Queen of Outer Space. That's so I can match them up if I'm making movie theater. And then this is the other size of plates. So it was 1.12 and 0.6. But these are slightly smaller at 1.10 and 0.55. So these are for the cars that have the smaller license plate openings just so that they can all be kind of uniform. And you can see that I've uh, used different numbers. So 1-958, there actually was a plate like that. And then a low ball number, number five, number 71, number 100, 129. And they went all the way up to uh, six numbers. So two, 200, 002. This one is a real license plate I got from my dad's place. Um, but a lot of them are just kind of made up numbers. Some of these are uh, trucks. I have to look it up again, but I think the C are the commercial vehicle. I think that's how it goes. The C's are commercial vehicles, the F's are farm. Um, uh, not too sure what N was. There used to be a doctor's plate and that was N, but they stopped using it in World War II. But at any rate, it's sort of like this. And some of the letters actually were for some of the zones in British Columbia. So like Richmond had a different letter, not an R, <laughs> but it had like an ABC or something like that. Maybe that's what it was. But yeah, at any rate, there they are. And you can actually look up the history of license plates of British Columbia on the internet. And that's how I found all of this. So again, really cool stuff that you can do with your printer and a little imagination. And then sort of cut some of these things out and put them in your model, like especially the record uh, album covers. Those would be cool. And I know there are record players. I might find some and put them in the truck bed. And so when you open up or take off the, the uh, tonneau cover, there's some cool stuff going on under there. Maybe make it like a little party scene or something, you know, have a record player in a cooler, maybe put 
Actually, that might be an interesting idea. Put a couple of chairs in the truck bed. And then this could be sort of what's going on. <laughs> Out there with Betty Carter. Harpo at work. I got a Harpo Marx record here from 1958, a comedy one. There's country music. And walking with Mr. Lee. I'm walking. Can't you see? Or was that Fest? That's Fest Domino. Okay, anyway. Bill Haley. Rock rocking the joint and you can listen to all these things on uh, on YouTube and that's how I found a lot of these there's Carl Perkins don't step on my blue suede shoes oh Elvis covered it too all right that's enough oh there wait this is an outer space uh, <laughs> record right there it's got an astronaut and a bunch of space girls <laughs> it's kind of cool anyway Check them all out, and uh, let's move on. Well, I think I finally figured out this instrument panel, so let me know if that gauge cluster looks exactly like the real thing or not. Now all I need to do is just reinstall that steering wheel, and we should be ready to put this whole dashboard in the car. And that's such a tight fit, I don't even think I'm going to bother to glue the steering wheel into place. But uh, there she is, all ready to go. Here I've painted the underneath of a few of the model kit parts, and I thought I would paint the wood with white paint. Originally I was thinking of maybe doing a very light pine wood grain, and then I thought, well, that wouldn't really match what's going on. And then I realized that, hey, I've painted my wooden house with white paint, like the handrails and that sort of thing. So why not just paint the bed underneath? Now there is a bit of an issue with some fish eyes coming up in here, and I don't know what's causing that. Maybe I should have uh, wiped down the bottom of this first. So I remedied that. Now this is the first coat, so I'll add a second one later for depth. But I remedied that issue with potential fish eyes on the interior panels of the cab by using this uh, sort of a... It's actually a plastic prep that you're supposed to apply before you paint the plastic. So once this gets a second coat, it'll look quite nice inside. And then finally, this one only needs one coat, but this is under the hood, and I've painted it with flat black. It's in the process of drying right now. Actually, all this paint is. But once it's dry, it'll come up with that nice flat black for the underhood matting, and that'll look really great. For the inside of our Ford box, I have a really crafty idea for the pickup truck bed. Instead of trying to paint this white over top of pink, and ending up with a different shade of pink because uh, red tends to bleed through white. So that will be an issue. But like I said, I have a crafty idea and you're just gonna have to wait to see what that is. The whole issue with this model kit is that the Baby Moon hubcaps mounted on Goodyear Polyglass GT tires are, they're really good for the factory fender, but they don't wanna fit underneath the modified Chevy Apache fender. That is because the original kit, much like the new recent reissues, had these hubcaps which glued on top of the factory wheel. Now, I want to try to get something underneath there, and I don't have these ones for the earlier edition. So what I'm actually thinking of doing is doing what they did back in the 50s. Now, in the 50s, they didn't have mag wheels and all that sort of thing. So the closest thing they had to making a custom wheel was what they called reversing the wheels. And of course, they chrome-plated it. Uh, this is what the Beach Boys sing about in uh, Little Deuce Coop. Sure looks pretty with the chrome-reversed wheels. So what they would do is they would take a normal wheel like this one, they would cut the center out with a blowtorch, then they would turn the center of it over and weld it back in. That's why they call them reverse wheels they would weld it back in where they cut it off, basically. And now instead of the front, you know, how it's very close in here to the edge, now it's sunken back because they flipped the inside out or, you know, refaced the center of it backward, however you want to say this. So then they got these reversed wheels and then, of course, they would chrome them to make them look nice. That was option number one. So chroming your existing wheel, pull the hubcap off, or reverse it, and then the other option was to buy the Baby Moon 
and pop it in, and that would go right in the center as a center cap cover, more or less. Option number two was to go to the wrecking yard or J.C. Whitney or those guys and find yourself a new set of hubcaps from one of the other cars on the market. So that is the other option. So what I have here is 58 Chevy hubcaps. Now these ones were in the High River Flood and the water in the flood, because it was contaminated with stuff, um, it actually removed all the chrome. It's really good at cleaning chrome, that, that scudsy water we had in 2013. Yeah. Uh, the second option I have, these are from the AMT 55 Chevy kit, and some of them are broken. These are earlier ones I owned. I've got a, a whole new set, so that's okay. Then I've got these ones from 57 Ford, and I also have this one, but I only have one of this. But that's just to show you. I think this is like a Dodge Lancer hubcap. Uh, basically, mag wheels didn't come in until the mid to late 60s. I mean, they were limited before that, but hardly anything. And then all of a sudden, the mags hit the scene. So a lot of this hubcap swapping went all the way up to about 1964. These ones, I believe, are uh, Cadillac hubcaps. But I'm not sure what kit they came out of. I think it was, it might have been this 58 Chevy as a, a dress up, but I can't remember anymore. And then here I've got a factory wheel. Now, this is the Ford factory wheel that was, you know, an alternative to these 57 wheels. And uh, the thing about this one is it's got a wheel back. And uh, that is the same wheel back that you would be putting on these. But I tested this under the fender well of the pickup truck, and they will fit in, but they are pretty tight. They're like this kind of tight in there, maybe back just a little bit, but very tight. But these are the narrow type of tires that are going to work, whereas these ones didn't, because these were designed to fit under the factory stock uh, rear fender. So if you're going to build your model with these, you either have to do one of two things, use the factory stock fender, or take these very wonderful Chevy Apache fenders and cut the wheel arch up. And then you lose that flare, you'd have to put it back on with a strip of evergreen or, uh, you know, the styrene of your choice. And then uh, use filler, but I think you would kind of ruin the look of these. So that's why I'm sticking with the narrow wheel. And the wheel of choice I think I'm going to use, or the hubcap of choice, I guess, is the one from the 57 Ford. So the reason is the Chevy ones are going to have the Chevy logo is all on them. And this is a Ford. So I'm ruling those out. I only have one of these. So <laughs> trying to make a match set won't work. Um, with the steel rims, I don't have wheel backs. That's the other issue. I don't have the wheel backs for these things. So I'll put those down there. I mean, look at how many steel wheels I got. <laughs> um, these ones that are supposed to be Cadillac style, I've got a model of a Cadillac of this era that doesn't have any. So I'm saving those for them. And it also doesn't have any wheel backs. So there's the 57 Ford wheel. So let's see if I can zoom in on it. Now, the nice thing about this is it has Ford right where that bullet is. Um, I could paint the outside, but I might leave that chrome as well, like a reverse wheel with a hubcap on it or something, or even a chrome-plated steel wheel. But there it is. I mean, how cool does that look? I don't know if the Cadillac one would... Uh, Oh, maybe it does. The nice thing about the Cadillac kind of one is that it's uh, nondescript, doesn't have any GM logos or anything on it. I don't know. That Somehow that looks heavy to me. So again, I think I will go with that nice Ford one, and uh, that'll be on our truck. Just for a little bit of fun, I threw that hubcap into a white wall so you could see what it looked like. And then there it is with the fender. Now it is a Goodyear polyglass, so the fender is not going to fit it. But anyway, that's sort of a, a look at it with the white walls.
I was looking at the actual wheel back assembly steps for this AMT57 Ford, and I kind of realized that I might actually need these wheel backs for the kit because there's the stock version, right? But then if we come across into our uh, custom version here, you can see it's using the same wheel back. The only other area is this one here, which is different. But yeah, I'm kind of trapped to not using those wheel backs, so I have to come up with an alternative plan. I was looking through my wheel backs, and I found that I do have a lot of these tunnel type ones. And uh, these are from I don't know where, but some of them were used in somebody's model, and they've got like really bad glue back, uh, glue burns in here. And then these three here are pretty much the same size, and the back of the wheel actually has a little spot for the axle to go in. It's got just a small peg sticking out, as you can see, right there. So it's not like I need to depend on those wheel backs from the AMT kit. I just need to take two hubcaps out of it. And then these rings, whoops, these rings will go in the back there just like that and leave it open so I can actually put the axle through into the wheel drum. So I'll test this wheel up against the Ford off camera and um, if it works, all I need to do is take one of these wheel backs and just sand it down until it fits into the tire nice and tight. Here we have our Ford hubcaps in the white wall tires. And uh, I always feel like somebody's watching me. And there's our wheels glued into place on the rear axle with a little tap of crazy glue. Just be very careful with that, that you don't get it inside, because otherwise they won't roll as nicely as this. So how does it work with our rear box put on well there it is and our wheels now allow this to roll we'll take a look at the side view of this later on because i need to leave you guys in suspense after getting the rear wheels into the car i was able to glue down the truck bed and uh i glued this overnight and i thought okay this is all good and everything and i went and put on the tonneau cover and it was rocking in all the corners. I was like, what's going on? So it turned out that I had to be careful because the frame is a little bit, you know, it's got a slight warp in it. So what happened is one of the corners of the pickup bed was not actually gluing in the right spot. And it was sitting upward. So I had to break all the glue joints out of the truck bed. And now, well, you can tell that I've got the tonneau cover pretty flat, but then the other issue is the tonneau cover is not flat. It uh, actually is sitting up a little bit, a little bit of a twist to it, but uh, overall it's not bad with what I have. So just turning the truck upside down, I added in that rolled pan into the back, and uh, I know I'm pretty close up to the camera lens. But I glued this rolled pan in here and uh, scraped the paint off all the edges underneath, glued her down, and now it looks good. Now this funny U-shaped or circle-shaped hole is actually for one of the spare tires to fit in up underneath. The only thing is I don't know if it'll go underneath the rolled pan. And secondly, I actually don't have a wheel and tire to go in here. Well, not with the kit I've got because they're gone. But... Uh, I guess I could try to see if I can fit something in there. Maybe I'll just let you know. <laughs> so just as a demonstration, here is a 57 Ford wheel. And you can see that it's hitting right into that rolled pan. So no, this is not going to work. So a tire for that, I guess, would have to be put in here or on the running boards or something like that. If I want to actually use a spare tire, that is. Now, as I said before, I wanted to do something different inside this truck bed. And instead of painting this wood, I was really going to add in some fabric. And I picked up this interesting piece from Walmart. And what I will do is make a little piece of cardboard or something, and then wrap this around the cardboard and make the cardboard wide enough 
to fit inside the truck bed, so then you would end up with something like that in the truck bed. In order to make this little plug for our pickup bed floor, we need to measure how long and how wide this thing is. And of course, I've got a spare pickup truck bed from another kit, because I have three still that need to be done. So what we have here, if I put this in and measure it, is three inches long going this way. And then from this point, it is about, well, just under two inches. Now, if you're going for metric, ooh, we have uh, seven and a half plus a little bit, plus two marks. So uh, that is 7.7 .7 by, actually, let's see, I've got this the wrong way about four and a bit. So I can get more accurate measurements and I'll just put them down here once I actually can get in and see what I'm doing. Here is the piece of cardboard that I cut to fit into the box. And if you notice, there is a little gap along here and it's a little bit short on the end. And that is intentional because once I get the fabric on there, I'm going to wrap it around the edges and I wanted to make sure that it was a little undercut to the measurements listed before so that once the fabric is on, I can actually take this out of the truck bed if I need to or want to and not have it bunch up and bind and even, you know, crinkle or something like that into the corners. So with that being said, here's the cardboard onto the fabric and I can just position this down a little bit and as you can see, it does need to be trimmed down. So maybe a line coming in there and going up here will give enough around this in order to fold it over the edges. And now I know I'm going to end up with a little issue with it binding in the corner, but I can always fold it up like this and then uh, like hot glue gun it down there and there and then snip this corner off so it's not going to, you know, bunch and uh, triple form up into here and whatnot, because that will make it sit higher in the corners of the truck bed. Here's our little piece of rectangular cardboard with the fabric glued on. Now, before I actually glued the fabric on, I did paint the cardboard with some of this Crafters acrylic white paint because it dries really quickly and the cloth was a little I guess uh, opaque and you could see through and with the brown cardboard it was really dulling this out. So just to make it more vibrant I painted it white. Now turning it over you can see how I did this. Folded one side over, put a hot glue bead there, squashed this in, folded the other side another hot glue bead and squashed it in. Then I backed it up a little bit from the edge here and I cut these triangles in this is much like wrapping a gift at Christmas or something like that. Or birthdays, whatever. Hanukkah, even. <laughs> anyway, so I again put a little diamond or a triangle of hot glue and squashed these down. And then I ended up with a pretty nice flat rectangle. So how does it fit into the bed of our truck? Well, let's just get this all together here. There's the bed of our truck. And now we've got this. Almost looks like a little mattress in there. Could uh, make little pillows and put them up in here and just have a bed. I guess uh, even, even Fonzie would like that. E. I do believe there is something I can add to this nice little mattress that I made in order to help keep it in the truck bed because when I'm turning this thing upside down, I find that this wants to come out. And that's never really any good. You don't really want surprises as you're handling your model. So what I thought I would use is this home pack multi-use double-sided carpet tape that I've had in my drawer for a very long time. And I can peel out a little strip and just put it in here and uh, take off the side so it's, you know, sticky on both sides. And then simply just put this down, press on it, and that should hold it into the truck bed 
without having to use, you know, some kind of weird glues in here and wreck the pink paint. Then if I ever want to take this out, I can put more pressure on it and peel the carpet tape off of the thing. And then that way when I turn this upside down it won't fall out and surprise me. Here's the carpet tape right around there, and you can see it's actually wide enough that it fits most of this pad. So now I can just turn this thing over, put it in the right spot, press it down, say a little prayer, and there we go. Now it's not falling out. So again, simple solutions for complex problems. Now with our pickup truck bed done, all we have to do is concentrate on the rest of the cab, getting all the rest of the pieces on there, as well as painting those interior components, and we'll be ready to go. Here we have our interior with the glass glued in, and these little runners are painted with the pink, just to try to hide them, camouflage them a bit. I also have the window cranks painted up with the chrome, then I added in that custom speaker down below. I'm going to try to get a black wash in there. And I glued the mirror on. And the mirror is a bit tricky. On the post at the end, you just have to file it just slightly for a bit of an angle. And then <laughs> glue it right up just behind where you can see the roof starting up right in that little area. But make sure you're dead center. Then the other thing I did was I scraped off two mold marks that I found in behind the firewall, and I painted those with the pink as well. Oh, and the little uh, mold marks that were up in the corners, those also were paint or uh, scraped out so that the glass would fit down. Then the only thing I have to do is glue in our awesome looking dashboard here. And if you notice, there's two little notches they're just right there, and of course on the other side. You have to scrape the paint in between the notches, get rid of that, and sand down the edges of the dashboard, and that's where it's going to glue. The dashboard will glue just on those little areas. I've added a bit of paint onto our truck here, and that is the Molotol pen going around the windshield frame, and the door handles as well. And you can see just how nice that looks. It's way better than bare metal foil. I think I am improving on how I'm applying this stuff. Now I've also got the rear view mirror in there and our speaker now, there it is, now has the uh, wash inside there. So that makes it more realistic. I do believe the steering wheel is <laughs> quite a bit high in there, like super high. And, uh, well, part of it is because this isn't the steering wheel provided with the kit. This is a one from the parts box. And it is more uh, tall and pointed. I also don't have it glued in. I just have it a bit loose. Um, I do believe AMT has sort of made this too long. You could pretty much cut a section out of this. Whoops, out of this and drop the steering wheel down that shaft a bit. And, uh, you know, maybe where that flat ring is. Cut that right off there. <laughs> Sorry. Cut that ring right off there and then just bring it down like a couple of millimeters. Or maybe, you know, quarter of an inch or something small like that. Maybe that's too far. But just bring it down to where someone can actually hold the steering wheel and not have it right up their nose. And I mean, that's that's really tall up there. So I don't know. But here you can see the door handles. And I noticed another little mistake here, and I don't know, like some people have got this, but I couldn't really do it well on my model. And that's the angle of this. So if you look at this, this is, this is the custom gas filler tube, and it's supposed to have a knockoff, you know, like on your wheels. And that is supposed to sit straight up. See how I've got it bent back this way? It's actually supposed to go up like this. But the angle on here is not correct, and I looked at the real Wildcat truck online. I'll just show a couple of pictures of it right here. Alright, and you can see that this is sticking 
out of the truck body more like pretty much straight up and down out of there. So I think I will break this off. Oh, yeah. Like basically there is no way you can actually turn this uh, spinner off without hitting the truck like in real life. So I'll break this off. And uh, okay, so there we go. So that's the angle we've got there. And as you can see, it's very uh, 45 degree angle kind of thing. And if I were to set this straight up and down, like I can't even, I just can't even, I can't get it in there really. So what I'm going to do is take my file and change the angle of this to make it not as steep and to make it come out more, you know, so you can get the knockoff to spin off and so that it looks more like the actual Wildcat truck. So I took my file and I was able to change that angle on the gas filler cap. It does stick out a little more straight than it should, probably. But at least you can undo the spinner without getting the paint all chipped off. I don't know if you can actually see the, the gap in there or not. But it does end up looking a lot better. There's the chrome door handles that I did with the Molotol pen. And for some reason, I've always wondered about this, there seems to be like a little metal thing right there and uh, there isn't one on the driver's side so i don't know what that is if any of you ford guys out there know let me know in the comments down below is this just a mistake by amt or is that actually a thing anyway i still have to glue the horn in here <laughs> i totally forgot about it and a few other little details and then uh, we'll take a look at this thing what I did to shorten up the shaft on the steering column is I took and I cut the steering column right here where this lower sort of loop is and I took out this much of it and then I took both ends and this is a Warhammer trick so in Warhammer if you're attaching some arm or something on in a metal model you pin both sides. So you drill a hole into here and here, of course, and then you take a metal wire and you stick it into the hole like I've done. Not too sure how well you can see that. But anyway, so you got a wire in there and then you can just put the wire in the hole and now you've got your shortened steering column. Now when I did cut this piece out I had to file both ends so that they were nice and flat and parallel to one another. But that's basically how I did it. So I just wanted to show you that and now I can put a little glue in between here and here and then push the thing together and let it sit for a while and uh, become solid. Then I can put it into the truck, hopefully. <laughs> it's a bit of a trick getting it out of here with everything glued in. But uh, then it shouldn't be right in the guy's nose for the steering wheel for the handles on the steering wheel, it should be more or less where it would be on a regular person. Now the kit includes some little antennas that they say in the instructions just to put wherever you feel like putting, but I find that they don't really like seem to want to go anywhere on this without wrecking the nice lines of the vehicle. However, I do f have these neat little dummy spotlights, and this I do believe came from the 1964 Mercury kit and yeah these little dummy spotlights are not in the uh, Ford truck chrome tree but I mean I have tons of these things everywhere so there they are they've got the little uh, light in them you know the detail and then they have pins down here and you cut them off the parts tree then you're supposed to drill holes one on each side or something like that then when you put these in, the spotlights are pointing down toward the ground. And that's that means that they're just in their resting position. But they are supposed to be dummy spotlights, so I don't know if they actually lit up or not. But the real spotlights in the car, they had a rod that went in from the outside, through and on the dashboard. And then you could adjust the handle on the rod and make the lights flick upward and then move around a bit and that sort of thing. But uh, I don't know if the dummy spotlights, you know, were mounted in there and you could swivel them up, you know, from the outside of the vehicle. Or if they just always pointed down and were fake, you know. 
But this parts tree is kind of nice too. You could use these pieces on one of your Ford trucks if you want. Here's an optional grill, and it's got these quad headlights if you turn them over. Unfortunately, there's a mold mark right in the dead center here. But if I had the lenses, I could put them in and then put them on that side of the grill. Another cool feature, this is a four differential here, but they have the knockoffs for your wheels. There's four of them. Then they have these cool looking wheels. I'm missing one. Maybe it's in my parts box. Uh, there's some of these little um, chrome bits, as well as some lake pipes. And you also have 58 Chevy backup lights. And it's too bad I don't know where the little red uh, light is for these. But that would be pretty cool to put on the back of the truck. And I have seen one where these are on the tailgate at an angle. So again, really cool stuff on these old parts trees. Oh, here's another thing. These two little chrome spears, I could cut one out, and or cut both of them out actually, one per side, and put them on the hood somehow. There still is quite a bit more to add to this truck. However, I thought I would just take a break for a moment and show you how well this is coming together. Here we have those dummy spotlights, and they are looking pretty cool on there. More chrome for the chrome gods, as well as these two spears on the front. Now, I did try to get them equal distance to the center line coming outward, but I do think one side is just a little wider than the other. Don't tell anybody, and uh, that'll be our secret on this thing. However, it does kind of annoy me that I didn't get it absolutely 100% perfect, but like I said, it's just a matter of a fraction of a millimeter. Uh, yeah, hopefully no, no one notices that too much. The steering wheel still looks pretty tall in here. I should have cut the column down a bit more, but it is so hard to judge this thing. And uh, I assembled the steering column back together and then crazy glued it in underneath the dashboard there because it was starting to rock a bit. And then I realized it was too tall. So yeah, I can't get that out from the life of me. So I will have to remember this the next time I build more of these trucks. And I am going to build a Coca-Cola edition of this thing coming up in the future. So I will remember that this is too tall in here for a steering column. Here we have the front three quarters of the truck with a work in progress still. Now I need to paint that Ford emblem up front. But I thought I would show you what this looks like, you know, from the three quarter. Again, you can see the nice flood lamp just pouring all over this, bringing up all this high gloss. This thing looks like it's been clear coated about 40 times, but it actually hasn't. It's just how the light is reflecting off of the regular paint. It is a high gloss to begin with anyway. Now, yeah, you can't really see because of the glare right here, so I won't talk about how high that steering wheel is. But you can see the cool little dummy spotlights as well as the two moldings up there and even the chrome spinner gas tank cap. Oh, and the Ford white walls. Sorry, not the white walls, the hubcaps. Yeah, again, looking pretty good. One thing that I need to add on here is those dummy exhaust pipes. There is quite a bit of dummy stuff going on in this truck. Dummy spotlights and dummy exhausts. And uh, yeah, it's sort of that way. But again, that was sort of the style in the 50s on some of these things, that they had some of that just to dress it up. But I also have to glue on those straight pipes coming out the back. So again, this will be pretty cool once it's all put together. Before we finalize this kit by gluing the cab on, I thought I would show you a few additional bits that I added onto the chassis in order to make it look a bit better. One of the first things I put on here was this new fan, and I'm not sure where it came from, but somehow having the fan shroud with just a little peg sticking out from the DeSoto engine, or the Fire Dome engine, it just didn't look right. So I was able to find a fan that actually had a hole behind it, so I was able to put the peg in the hole and give an actual fan on here. Another thing I did was add chrome onto the bolts of the pulley down below, but I'm not sure if anyone's going to actually see that. 
Now underneath I added in the scavenger pipes. These actually went in quite nice. Uh, j added a little bit of glue onto the front and slid it in. I had to use tweezers in order to get this up underneath the rear axle. The only thing I'm thinking about is if this ever hits a bump I think these pipes will be dented right to heck. <laughs> but uh, I drilled out the ends and I added in some black paint and put a little ring of chrome paint on there with the Molotol pen and added a little chrome right there for the drain plug on the gas tank. So again, made it quite nice underneath here. And those uh, scavenger pipes are just so nice and straight. <laughs> Looks really good. Another thing I did was use the chrome pen and just made a little box around these raised boxes. This is where you would be putting, uh, you know, things down the side of the pickup truck bed into the rails just to lock it in. But overall it looks better. You can see them sticking out, shining more with the chrome. Also added on chrome onto the seat belts. Now here I just added it to the part that goes into the belt. But up here I made a big chrome strip as if you were to pull that up and uh, unlock the seat belt. Not sure if that's quite how some of these older ones work. I know there was a button in, say, uh, the 1970s style of seat belts. Not too sure on the early ones, if they were more like aircraft, where they were the clasp type, you know, that used to pop open and fold. Uh, one more thing is scraping the chrome, or sorry, the paint off those contact surfaces. So I scraped along here, and that's the floor meeting the firewall. And I also scraped on these angle bits here and here sort of in the fender aprons, part of the fender apron. And that, of course, is uh, where it's going to connect onto the cab. Looking at the cab of the truck and just removing the hood, just so I don't turn it upside down, everything crashes. I have installed the horn right there. And just thinking of this pink, it's... Uh, I could have, you know, done the Roadrunner horn from uh, Plymouth in the 70s, painted it pink as well, but I didn't. So just uh, to go over where the contact surfaces are, there it is scraped off the bottom of the firewall and then on the back of these angles. I'm not too sure if I'm going to get much glue contact going there and there, but hopefully everything will look good once this is all put together on that chassis. We have three more pieces to add to the model once the cab has been glued to the chassis and that includes the two dummy lake pipes as well as the radiator hose. Now because the original Ford had uh, radiator hoses on each side of the engine block, one was the intake and one was the return, on the DeSoto Fire Dome engine it has one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, unfortunately, the water hose at the bottom is not present. However, you do have this crossover pipe going from the original stock radiator and going into this sort of flange unit and coming down here with the actual rubber hose. And I decided to paint that hose pink just to match the pink theme of the truck. Originally, I had this pink all the way out here, but then I was thinking about it and I thought, no, They'd probably use a metal crossover pipe in this and then have the hose, you know, attach up to the metal pipe. And you can see I've even painted on a little chrome band to act as that hose clamp. Here's the engine bay of my 1953 Ford pickup truck. You can see that wonderful DeSoto Fire Dome engine sitting in here with those beautiful air cleaners and the eight little single carburetors as well as our radiator with the hose coming in here onto that metal tube. There's all our little control boxes and everything, our electrical boxes. Again, looking really cool. And the hood latch. Here we have our 1953 Ford pickup truck after it's all done. You can check out those really cool lake pipes on there. Well, the dummy lake pipes anyway. The dummy mirrors and our chrome tail lights there with the gold insert. I've also got the 1958 Farm license plate on here, F2597. Again, turned out really nice, and I do like the color. Do like the Ford 
factory hubcaps on there for the custom look. Also the little chrome spears on the hood. They look great as well. And then you can even see that I did up that Ford emblem right there on the hood. Here's our truck turned up on its side so you can see the undercarriage. And here we've got our engine sneaking up underneath there as well as the nice pink wheels and the front axle. White springs in the front. We also have our exhaust pipes going into those wonderful aluminum mufflers and then coming out with the chrome scavenger pipes off the back. We also have the pink drive shaft and rear axle. The only thing missing is that spare tire, but like I was saying, I would have to cut into the rolled pan in order to make that fit. And I also need the cross brace, which I do believe is missing. So we'll just ignore that. But overall, I mean, this looks really good underneath. We've also got our fuel tank there with the chrome plug. If you've built this model in the past, let us know how you did it in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you my version of AMT's 1953 Ford F100 pickup truck. And I encourage you that if you have any projects that you need to finish, why not bring them out and get that last little bit done and post it and have your own Finish It Fridays type of video. And until next time, everyone, happy model building and we'll see you on Finish It Friday.